a lot of board members have advisors that sit alongside them. The chief exec has the non-exec directors. In fact, he's obliged to have those in a lot of cases. And they give him advice outside of his sphere of interest or his specific sphere of knowledge. It adds a context, it adds a colour to what he thinks. The accountants, the finance directors, they have the auditors. Auditors aren't just there to check that he's doing his job right. They are actually there to make suggestions, to, to give advice, to improve the way he behaves, to bring information and legislation to him as well so he doesn't have to keep up. Marketing uses agencies. They use the extra reach. They use the different methods and mechanisms to do it. And without those, I think they'd be very one-dimensional. And yet CIOs look around and they seem to think that, ah, external consultants, that's a bit of weakness, that means there's something I can't do, it's a failing on my part. But the CIO IO advisor acts in exactly the same way as those other advisors do. They are there to offer legislative guidance, they're there to do a lot of the reading the CIO doesn't have the time to do, to step back and add some colour and some context to what that CIO is doing. They're as valuable as the others are, and I think it's time now that the CIOs recognise it. Actually, it's a sign of strength. And even where you have a CIO advisor, you may have the one person who turns up, but usually behind them there will be a team of experts. So the advisor will come with contextual information in the first instance. They'll be able to engage and understand the business. If there's a technological answer to it, they will then go back and engage the right experts, translate and bring it back to the CIOs. I think CIO advisors now are a real positive asset to most businesses.